Hello everybody, I'd like to welcome you all back to another episode of Summarize Ministries. I'm your host, Mickey Emerson, and we are taking our journey through the judges with a gentleman by the name of Shamgar. He is the successor to Ehud the Assassin. So, what we have here, I've written a paper on this gentleman. It's short, there's not a whole lot to it because he is allowed one verse of scripture in the entire Old Testament. And what we have here is Judges chapter 3, verse 31. It reads like this. After him, that's Ehud, after him came Shamgar, the son of Anath, who struck down 600 Philistines with an ox goad, and he also saved Israel. Now, an ox goad would be a, about an eight foot long stick with a poker on the end that he could use to poke his oxen as he's tending to the field, so he was most likely a farmer. And at the other end of that is a spade that he could kind of work the ground with as he's going along. So, we know that he was likely a farmer, and that he used his ox goat as a weapon, and that he saved Israel. So, where do we go with that? All right, I, uh, if, should we pick up where we left off, we would take the tail end of Ehud's time as judge of Israel and settle into 80 years of peace and prosperity. Uh, we know that during the Exodus and the post-Exodus, the people of Israel have had difficulty remaining faithful and focused, as do we, if we want to be honest. Uh, a common theme amongst the people uh, has been blessings, apostasy, punishment, cry out to God, he welcomes his children back. We'll see that theme time and time again throughout the book of Judges. So uh, I believe that it is safe to say that after 80 long years, the people of Israel had once again lost their way. And should we fast forward to chapter 5, uh, if we may, verse 6 reads like this. In the days of Shamgar, the son of Anath, in the days of Jael, the highways were deserted and the travelers went by roundabout ways. Now, what we can deduct from this is that Israel had lost its way and the nation was falling into disarray. Didn't have money to repair what little roadways they had. They were having to take roundabout ways to get past uh, pillagers and people that were causing disruption throughout the land. This would lead those outsiders who were not subdued early on, such as the Moabites, the Canaanites, to take notice and seek an opportunity to overtake the land of God's people. So, back to chapter 3, verse 31, and chapter 5, verse 6, we put them together and we use deductive reasoning. So what I have come up with is that after the death of Ehud, it is anyone's guess just how long it took the Israelites to fall away. All right, we, we know that they had 80 years of peace, but that sort of thing is gradual. It's, it's not like you just fall away overnight. Uh, more often than not, it's not an instant occurrence, it's progressive. Matthew 24, 10, verses 10 through 13 reads like this, And then many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because lawlessness will be increased, which is why we have the roadways that you're having to take the byways instead of the highways, all right, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. And this proclamation by the Son of God uh, could be applied to the Israelites, Israelites, then it is likely that he is speaking from experience since he is Jesus and he is the Alpha and the Omega. We see that after the death of Ehud, the people of Israel have fallen away. The nation is desolate, it's lawless, uh, which is what we see when people have to use the byways to get from point A to point B. So they are looking for ways to avoid struggle or disruption. And now back to Shamgar, uh, doing a little bit of reading on him, and there's not a lot to find. But uh, scholars have surmised that his presence in the book of Judges placed between Ehud and Deborah could be a mistake. Some have placed him at the tail end of Samson, who in the book of Judges is actually the final judge. Uh, Jews had a way of writing text in relation to topic rather than chronology. Uh, so for Samuel who wrote this, uh, it may have seemed fitting 
to place it between Ehud and Deborah, which is what I believe. All right, I believe that Shamgar was a judge at the same time as the next judge that we're going to discuss, Deborah. So, if we go back to chapter 5, verse 6, it mentions an individual by the name of J.L. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I'm taking a guess. J-E-A-J-A-E-L. It's a female, and she is a heroine from Judges chapter 5. She helps Deborah and her helper, Barak, defeat the Canaanites. So, it is my contention that while Deborah and Jael and that army are fighting the Canaanites, which would be to the northeast eastern region of Israel, Shamgar is down here on the southwest region fighting the Philistines, down on that west bank. That's what I believe. So I believe that it was uh, uh, all happening at the same time. Deborah and Shamgar, I do believe, were judges at the same time. I don't know that for sure. That's just my estimation. All right. Um, I also believe that he could have been a Hittite. Uh, I say this because his name is similar to the one that was associated with Sangara, who was a Hittite king of uh, Carchemish. And his name has, in the Hebrew, means uh, a stranger to the land, somewhere along those lines. So if he were a Hittite by birth, then he would be a stranger to the land of Israel. Again, I don't know any of this for sure, but I think it's neat to ponder, and I think it's something that we could all think about. Uh, I like this premise, whether it's accurate or not, and really it's all up for speculation, and salvation isn't dependent upon the placement of Shamgar, so we have that going for us. Um, the reason being, if he is a Hittite, then it's possible that he was fleeing the idolatry of the pagan worship that the Hittites were using and he was looking for a God-fearing land but he's entered a land with a love and a fear of the Lord only to discover that God's people have also abandoned their Lord uh, and fallen into idol worship themselves so he's appalled at this discovery and he begins to ponder his decision again total speculation I just like the way it sounds and I to me it all makes sense during this time, the Philistines, who have been a thorn in the side of Israel for years, and still are in one respect or another, uh, take the opportunity to infiltrate the land and instill their own government, or just a pillage and plunder. All right, so it is at this time that Shamgar gives out a rallying cry to those Hebrews that are still loyal to the Lord to rise up against the Philistines. Likely, without much of an organized army, uh, kind of like a Minuteman sort of situation from 1776. I envision Shamgar and his loyal battalion ambushing the Philistines in the night for an extended period of time until they finally pack up camp and return back to their land. Uh, the legend of Shamgar is spread throughout the land, speaking of the God-fearing Hittite that has shown no mercy for those infiltrating God's land and has struck them down brutally with an ox goat. The Jews are quite anxious to get a glimpse of this incredible man and he uses this opportunity to preach the gospel of God and lead his people back to him. So notice that in chapter 3 verse 31 he uses the ox goat to slay the Philistines and he saved Israel is the second point. So that's why I feel like him slaying the Philistines got the attention of the Jews which allowed him to help save Israel with the word of God. Uh, again, I have no idea if any of this is accurate, um, but I do know that Shamgar was a man sent to judge God's people, and he had to use brutal force in the process uh, by any means necessary. So following God will not always be pretty with smiles and hugs. Um, sometimes defending the Lord will take struggle and sweat, and that is the moral of the story. Uh, hopefully, we don't have to use ox goats to defend God's word. Um, but we are called to be stern. And we are called to not be wavering. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10 reads like this. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another 
it may not be conventional. Uh, these, these are my words. It may not be conventional what everyone else is doing, uh, but we are all equipped. All right. Shamgar was merely a farmer. He wasn't a man of nobility. He probably wasn't a man highly educated with resources uh, to the left and to the right. He was a simple man who used what he had to defend the land of Israel, to defend God's land, and to call out God's people, to minister to them, to encourage them, and to strengthen them. So let us all use whatever gifts we may have, whether it be listening, speaking, singing, preaching, uh, whatever it may be, let us, let us use those gifts, writing, uh, to uh, lift up one another, to lift up our brothers and sisters, our congregation, our family members, our children, and uh, do it as best we can in order to glorify God. All right? I thank you all for joining us today, uh, and I pray that you're with us the next time that we come together to discuss Deborah, the next judge. In the meantime, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and we hope to see you back soon.